Hello, welcome. I'm Commissar Marek and today we are going to take a look at CC3 Augustus and specifically at a feature that is a car depot, a logistics building, as well as a highway and the new resources, which is sand and stone, as well as concrete. So cover all of these things. Let's start with the most important part, which is the car depot. On this map, we are here in Valencia in the city construction kit, just because it's easy to use for testing. And I've set up a basic housing area for us right here. Now, uh, there is fertile ground uh, right here, but for the sake of argument, let's say that you could not bring this wheat easily into the granary with destination for the farms. And so you would have to farm a little bit of a distance away like for example here so we've got some fruit farms and wheat farms they are outputting their food into this granary uh, usually in c3 you would not want to mix food types in a single granary because it messes up messes up your carters if you especially if you fetch food but with car depots you can actually do that you can set it to accept you don't need to actually send a carter from the granary because that is fairly inefficient especially if you set two types what we can do instead is we go into our industrial structures and down here we have a scar depot which costs 100 denarii and it will take 10 workers from the population we can build some of those here let's start with two each one of these depots will employ 10 workers in it they also have set of orders so when you select a car depot like this let's zoom out a little bit when you select a car depot you can see that granaries will have numbers displayed on top of them and that is the number of that specific granary so if we for example would want this granary or the, sorry this car depot to bring wheat from our farm area to our block area all we need to do is make sure that delivering resource is selected to be wheat then we need to set a condition when will they bring the resources over we will set this to be always you can also do source has more than x amount so you can set it when this granary will have more than um, 20 units so that it doesn't run out con constantly if this was relying um, as a food source for another block for example you don't want to it to completely bottom out you could make sure that they always have something in this granary as well but for the most cases you will want to do always condition source which is from where the resources are going to be brought from so we'll select this option and then we know that this granary is granary 3 so we'll select from granary 3 and it's going to be brought to granary 2 which is right here now how car depot works is it will have thresholds for specific numbers of employment as i said it takes 10 workers now on max capacity it will send out up to three cards if it has all the employees it will send three carters on the map which will travel between the source and the destination in this case the granary from food uh, which from which will get food and to granary nearby the block each carter can carry up to four goods if it is anything other than food so for example timber iron weapons anything if it's food then each carter can hold up to 16 units in it and so you can imagine that they are quite efficient at doing that since each carter carries like half the granite worth of food on it what we can do with this is we can really stretch how far you can bring food in augustus and this is game changer for city building because you can now establish blocks even relatively far away if there's water you can just quite easily bring food if you are willing to invest some denarii and labor into these depots so uh, it's essential to know some of the thresholds i can tell you so if the car depot is at 75% or higher staff, depot will have up to three cards running at the same time. A very short route may not have that. So if you know if, if the car depot is fulfilling the task at hand too quickly, if it's too short of a distance, they might not send all the cards. But if they can use them, they will send all three. If the car depot is at 50% uh, or you know from 50 to 75% staff, which means, you know, from that 10, means that if it's at five or seven workers, a depot will only have up to two cards. So it will diminish the number of cards by one. Not only that, but also if you don't have full employment in the card depot, it will reduce their spawning speed because they spawn at a certain rate. And so um, it's crucial to have it full employment so that you can actually use it 
uh, at peak efficiency. If it's at 25 or two workers up to five workers, the default will only have one card that will be traveling below 25% uh, staff, so two workers, it will not have any card pushers. So it actually will not work properly. Now, lower percentage of staff will also increase the delay between spawning cards, as I said, so uh, it's, it's in your interest to keep it high so that the, they can spawn more quickly. And that is because each time the carter will spawn, they'll go and do the task that is set. So they will go to this granary, fetch food, bring it over and deliver it. If there is no space in this granary, they'll just wait here and if there is a space, they will unload. And not only will they unload the whole thing, like the 16 wheat, but they'll also unload in increments of one if needed. So they can just continuously top off the granary until they run out and then they'll return. Now, how that works is, is uh, the carter will spawn, they'll go to their source. Actually, I need to double check this. They'll go from depot to the source, which, is, which means that they'll fetch it. Then they'll travel to their destination and then they will go back to their depot and then they'll do the cycle again once they spawn a new. Now, uh, what this means is you want to keep uh, these, you want to keep these card depots close to either the destination or the, spo the, the source. Either one works. Um, it might be slightly better to have it near the destination, but it doesn't matter because they need to travel that way to bring the food then anyway. So it doesn't actually matter, but you know, as long as you don't keep it like somewhere in the distance, it's fine to have it either near the source or near the destination. So now with this one set up for wheat, we also will set up the other one, which is going to be for fruits. So let's set that the same way. Just going to bring it from granary three to granary two. And this will ensure that we'll have some food in our block. So let's observe it a little bit. It will get workers. You can see that it has an animation. All these numbers have been provided by Uberwaffe, by the way, who is a developer on Augustus project and he's behind coding the card depot into existence. So they'll deliver the food. And if there is no space, they would wait around. Now, if there is even one piece of food, they will start bringing it, but they can carry up to 16 of food, as I mentioned. So they will still travel even with less, but if there is enough, they will grab whatever's there, basically. Now, since we have food, we can just feed these people. And now we can also use the car depot for industry. So I have some iron mines here. And for, um, for the sake of the argument, let's say that we would really want to have our industry for weapons here, but there are no rocks. And so I've set up some weapons workshops, but we are lacking iron. And so what we will do is add some car depots. Now, why is this useful? Because you can also do this with a warehouse, as I discussed in other video. Also, you can use uh, basically the destination for uh, destination for delivering raw resource production structures and workshops to a warehouse quite far away. But this is actually useful if it's not that close so that you cannot use that mechanic and you need to bring it with carters. Instead of the warehouse work doing it, you can do it with you can do it with the car depot. And so the, the carter from a warehouse will actually spend all his time delivering the iron to these workshops instead of having to also go and fetch the iron. So this is actually simplifying that quite a bit. Uh, we could also have just gone with one, but I went with two. It's, it might be slight overkill, but it usually isn't a bad idea to, to have slightly more capacity. So they'll continuously do that now. They'll manufacture weapons. We can open a trade route for that because again, it's a Valencia. It's a fairly simple city, but might as well make some money so we don't go bankrupt, bankrupt without any reason. So let's start exporting that. Also, we start to feed people, so I'm just going to quickly give them some basic services like a school and theater. And we'll wait for some more people because the car depots do cost 10 workers, so we need to keep in mind that it does need workers, but it's not that brutal. Like, you can you can get away with uh, building quite a few of them bef before it starts to really affect your city in any meaningful way. So we'll see that they'll start bringing the iron and this Warehouse Carter will now continuously deliver iron to workshops instead of also having to fetch its iron. So that's super useful. If the, there's no space, you can see that they are waiting. And if a piece of iron is brought from it, the one of the carters will offload float some of the iron that he has on him. But if he cannot offload all of it, he'll just sit there. If you click on a carter, you can also tell him to go back. You can see what he's wearing. If you click the call button, he will also dump the resources that he's currently carrying. You will not get any of them back. So he just deletes them and goes back to the depot where he despawns. Same happens if you change their orders midway. 
So if you change this to something else, he will just dump whatever he's getting and starts doing that instead. Okay, so far so simple. You can use this to top off your warehouses full of pottery and other goods for consumption. You can use this for food, especially. You can use this for your industry, which is super useful, especially in maps that are more limited on resources. You need to bring some resources over. You can do that fairly easily. Make sure that you trade in very good areas for your uh, trader. And another thing we can take a look at is a highway. We don't have much money, but Caesar is gonna bail us out here. Uh, for the sake of testing, I'm just gonna go into that here. And he gave us substantial amount. So highway is a structure you find under uh, this tab, which is build roads. And so you can build either a road or a highway. Highway is very expensive, 100 denarii, and it will be two by two square. Uh, it also can be uh, smaller. If you, for example, build one two by two and then you want it to be shorter, you can do this. But keep in mind that every this two by two highway tile will actually, or four tiles uh, in theory, will actually have upkeep. It will have levy which you know what love is because uh, you've played Augustus, I think. So you should know, but I have, I'm having a little bit of a trouble clicking on this. I might have to build another one somewhere here. If you click on a highway, you can see that we are paying one denarii per month upkeep for this. So 12 denarii per year. It doesn't seem like much, but when you build like, you know, 40 highways, you can see how that can add up significantly. What the highway does is it is undesirable so no people want to live nearby it. We can check that with our commerce. Oh, actually, desirable it right here. So you can see that it has two by uh, two tiles undesirable um, effect, which is quite severe. So there's that. Also, if you build regular roads nearby it, it will turn straight up into the cobblestone texture because it looked severe if you build the dirt roads. That's why it's there, but it's not actually desirable because usually the effect for the cobble roads are actually, if there's desirable structures like these temples, it will turn it into cobblestone. But this is actually quite the opposite. It is undesirable. Now, uh, the highways, they boost speed of any walkers that are on them, including enemies and your own troops and also all the various you know, destination walkers, it boosts them by 50%. Or actually, sorry, it doubles their speed, which means they go double as fast, so 100% increase. And really useful to set up your trader, and traders will prefer to go over it and they'll path around it if they are on the map, uh, or if they enter the map when the highway is already built. You can also use this, you can see they still go quite effectively with the corners like this, so you don't actually need to like uh, have it like this. Something you can use this for as well is, you can actually use it as, um, Connecting parts of the city. So if there's a block here and a block here What happens is the regular walker if we build a prefect and an engineer And let them spawn you'll see that they don't actually go on the highway because they are roaming walkers So they act as roadblocks basically uh, you cannot customize what, who's allowed on them But if you build something like for example an amphitheater, sorry, it's a tavern we built an amphitheater and we will build an actor's colony. Probably give these give these guys engineer and prefect as well for the sake of showing it off so it doesn't burn down. Um, so let him become active and he's gonna send a destination walker. If it is a destination walker, so market ladies, any number of uh, entertainment destination walkers, all of these people will actually go through the highway. So just keep that in mind. If you connect your city with a highway, this could happen, which could be really bad if you don't customize. Um, for the sake of market ladies, that, that's the biggest concern because someone could go, instead of this market going for food here, they could start going somewhere insanely far because that's how they work. So, you know, just keep that in mind again. Quite expensive, but it might be worth it on some maps if you need to, especially if you cannot fulfill a yearly quota of uh, goods, you are just not being able to push them out because the traders don't have the capacity. Highway just might be what you need. It could also help with caravan sarai, but the highway will uh, serve that purpose as well by speeding up the transfer of goods significantly since they can, um, the faster they leave, the faster new caravan can spawn. I explained this before, so just so you know. I'm not sure if you are exporting weapons. Yes, we are. Okay. <clears throat> Another thing we wanted to take a look at is the new resources. So now, with the current version of Augustus, I'm playing on Unstable. Uh, there are new resources added into Caesar 3. And these resources are used exclusively for monument construction at the moment. So Caravansarai, Grand Temples, Colosseum and Hippodrome will use stone and sand and concrete. How these things work is it has been patched into the past map, so if you play the campaign or any maps that have been safe edited, 
you will actually like Julius maps you will actually have this resource enabled as per uh, rules that have been stipulated that is if the map has clay available locally it will also allow you to mine sand these will have different production values i'm gonna show them on the screen afterwards just for now so if if the map had clay which this one has so if you go into raw resources we can make and we can make a clay pit which means we can also make a sand pit and so these work like clay pits uh, they also have higher reach from water currently this might change by the way uh, because there has been discussion about this being too large of a coverage you can see that if we try to build a clay pit it will actually not go as as close you can see that it it m needs to be much closer to the water while the sand pits can actually go quite far away and so um these will uh, produce sand which then sand can be turned into concrete in workshop for concrete maker now concrete maker is a little bit special so we can build one and you can take a look so 10 employees required and it stores sand from sand pits and then it will turn 50 sand which means half one unit and it will turn it into concrete it also needs water there are two ways to do that you can do it with fountains or wells but that's only gonna give it a reduced efficiency if you give it a reservoir access so it needs to be built within the reservoir reach even one tile will count it will actually have the full efficiency production value i'm gonna show the production values on the screen here for sand stone and concrete if the map had marble or iron enabled on the map itself even the campaign or in the julius maps it will also allow you to mine or marble it will also allow you to mine stone it's done for a cost 60 dinar, which is the highest cost of these raw resources and it will it will look like this new new skins for all these buildings so they look quite nice i i personally like them a lot so if you take a look at it so this is how it looks like and now warehouses will also be able to store these things so stone it will also have sand which is here and concrete it cannot be stored concrete can only be made and kept in the actual concrete maker building until it's needed and then it will be delivered to a monument construction site by the engineers uh, guild and the work camp so actually i think the work camp delivers the resources while the architects guild actually just goes and builds the stages so you know that's how that works but um, that's how it works so if you build a monument somewhere far away you might need new concrete makers nearby just to make it happen grand temple or mm, sorry large temples oracles mausoleums should not be affected by the new resources but even campaign maps will have access to these new resources if the map does not have clay or iron or marble or any of that so that you cannot have uh, sand and clay uh, sorry sand and uh, stone what happens on these maps is it will automatically be added because you will have a trade route that sells you clay on these maps it's not here but it would be if we had such a such a trader like here taraco it sells clay so now it also sells you some sand okay so that would be in a campaign or an angelist maps as well now so that you are not soft locked by not being able to build monuments so that uh, that's been done if you play maps that have custom empires in augustus augustus maps specifically made with custom empires um, feature it means that these maps will need to be manually updated by the map makers themselves otherwise these new resources will not be present therefore disabling any monument construction to happen on these on these maps so just keep that in mind and i think that's gonna be everything uh, for today it has been 20 minutes which i think is sufficient talk about this topic let me know if you have any questions regarding this feature or any of the others i'm um, gonna look forward to covering more features in the future so thanks for watching and see you around bye